the remarkable work you've been doing during a worldwide crisis. Not even a pandemic could put a damper on the indelible badass spirit of the class of 2021. No matter what was thrown at y'all this past year, no matter how tough it got, virtually you made it work and even found a way to sing and dance about it and produce a new music video. Yes, I'm raising my paddle for Archer because you young women are the ones we've been waiting for. You who address the importance of voting and work with my school votes to register thousands of youth voters. You who advocated passionately for social justice and a need for curriculum reform so that more voices of color and diverse perspectives are seated at the Archer tables. And this was just one of the most poignant and lasting things that you did. You created a service and activism website for all students to find opportunities to get involved and become engaged with the issues that truly matter. Wow, what a powerful group of women you are. Each of you brings to this class your individual talents that you will go forward, you will hone, you will develop, you will sharpen. And at the end of your next chapter in college, you choose to use it as a gift of service to the world. That is my deep wish for you. When I heard about your website for activism and service, I knew that I was going to be preaching to the choir, speaking to you all about the value of service, because I know you've heard it for the past four years. But I want you to know that it's not just about doing things of service. It's about shifting your life's paradigm to serve your truest self, your highest calling, whatever that turns out to be. I know some of you already know what course you want your life to take. Good for you. And some are still figuring it out good for you and may change your mind many times before you land on the thing that actually fills you up. Know this for sure. You have the right to change your mind and it may take a while to find what makes your heart sing like an unaccompanied minor. But don't worry about your passions or your purpose. For now, just follow your curiosity to find out what lights you up. Ultimately, Wherever you land in a career, whether you're an entrepreneur, an actress, an engineer, a mother, a doctor, a photographer, a professor, if the paradigm from which you see the world is, how can I be of service with my talent? How can I be used in service? Then I guarantee you, no matter what your talent or offering, you will be successful. 10 years ago, I ended the most successful talk show in history. For 25 years straight, The Oprah Winfrey Show was the number one talk show on television. And because that show was fueled by my passion to share stories so that people would know they were not alone, it never felt like work. Every day I lived in the sweet spot of I'm life, so doing what I love <laughs> and getting paid I'm extremely well. But let me tell you the secret of that sweet success. When I was first hired, I was just happy to have the job. i have been working in television since I was 19 years old, a sophomore in college, and the youngest evening news anchor and reporter on national television at the time. And by the time I was 22, after I'd grown as much as I could, I moved from Nashville to Baltimore, still just happy to have a job that paid me a little more than Nashville. And at age 29, I headed to Chicago. Why? Because I felt that I'd grown as much as I could. That is a running theme or a pattern in my work life. Everybody has theirs. You will soon see what your pattern is. So when I've grown as much as I can, I start looking for change. And Chicago completely changed the trajectory of my life. For the first time in my career, I didn't have a co-anchor or a partner to do the news or a morning talk show. I was doing it solo, on my own. And when the show went national, the first few years were just a whirlwind. I tell you, I look back on it like a blur. And to everybody else, it looked like I became famous overnight, but I'd already been working in television for 12 years by the time we went national, making mistakes, sometimes going on air with my eyelashes falling off because I can never get inside the corners to stick. People would sometimes say to me, you know, you're so lucky 
to have the number one talk show. But let me tell you this, it wasn't luck. It was 12 mm -hmm. years of working, whatever ship was given, nights, weekends, 14 hour days, multiple weeks of no time off. So it wasn't luck that got me to number one. Hard work. It was preparation. Preparation, meeting the moment of opportunity, which is how I define luck. You make yourself lucky by getting ready for it, so getting prepared. Control. But here's the secret that you innovative Archer girls already know. I was just clipping along, doing very well. And one day was interviewing members of the Ku Klux Klan. And during the commercial break, I saw them signaling each other in the audience. I, I thought that. I was exposing them and their racist vitriol by doing that show. But they were using me mm -hmm. for the exposure that to too. recruit other members. Mm -hmm. And after that show, I went to my producers and I said, I will never do another show like that again, giving hate a platform. Mm -hmm. and shortly after that, we did a show on cheating husbands. The producers were so proud of themselves. They had booked a man who was cheating on his wife and the wife and the girlfriend foolishly agreed to appear with him on television, unthinkable at the time. And during that show, the man announced to the world and to his wife who was sitting there that his girlfriend was pregnant. Mm. He said that on live television. We all gasped, because I certainly didn't know it was coming. The audience didn't know it was coming. And I looked at his wife's face, and I'm telling you, the hurt and the shame, the humiliation mm. I saw on her face, I have to this day never forgotten it. I'm sure. And I said to my producers, I'll oh, never do that kind of thing. Never show. again will anyone be embarrassed or shamed or humiliated on my watch. She had to do a so show behind the action. I can see cheater. the universe, like with a capital L, moving me in the direction of, you got it, service. So my producer said, okay, we can't book anything to do with hatred or shame or embarrassment. So mm -hmm. what kind of show do you want us to do? I said, from now on, we're going to work at being of service to our viewers. Keyword. We're going to intentionally aim to be a force for good and service. And that question of how do we best serve our viewer is behind and in front of every single booking from this day forward. And that is when the show took off. It was no longer just a hit, but became a phenomenon. And the same can be true for each of you. Phenomenal women. Let me tell you this. Don't worry about being successful. Strive for the truest, highest expression of yourself as a human being. And then use that expression really comment in, like in service to the is. world. And you will surprise yourself and what unfolds. You will be in awe of your own life. The work you've done here at Archer has set the course for a future so bright it burns my eyes. And whether you were learning the importance of civic engagement or creating powerful senior show websites featuring art, writing, collaborating to create a group show in the Eastern Star Gallery, bringing never before seen work made during the pandemic, you've already won the prestigious Limelson MIT Inventing Award for inventing an infrared device to detect and extinguish embers from wildfires and you're still in high school. So your leadership and service has resonated throughout your years here at Archer and particularly your senior that? year. One of the students yes, or the senior year you class? spent in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You all made it clear to everybody who knows you that you are the future leaders of our country. You are the ones we've been waiting for. And to paraphrase my mentor, mother friend, Maya Angelou, now I understand just why your head's not bowed. Why you don't have to shout or jump mm. about or even have to talk real loud. She sound like but When I see you passing, you archer girls, woo, makes me so proud. 
I say it's the click of your heels. It's the bend of your hair. It's the palm of your hand. It's the need for your care. Because you're some women, phenomenally, phenomenal women, who didn't just survive, but thrive during a pandemic and will forever tell That's your Maya story. Speech. Maya That's Maya Angelou. The badass class of 2021. Congratulations! I'm just